everybody, I am Nico D. Today I'm back with the Rock Pi 4B. So I reviewed this board a while ago, but then it was a very new board. So a lot of things have changed by now. So I'm gonna go over the software that is available for now. So now this can be used with a mainline Linux kernel. So the Linux kernel 5.2 or higher. So I am using 5.4 right now. Also, Panfrost is coming for it, so the GPU drivers for the RK3399, that was a problem until now. So we couldn't play games in Linux with this, we couldn't use OpenGL, but this is now coming. I will show you a review of Panfrost, but this is not ready yet, but we can expect it in a few months to be available for everybody. So, also Armbian works great now on it. They've done a lot of work to get this board into their kernel. Also now there is Manjaro for this board. Manjaro is a very cool operating system, but there are some problems with the RockPy. So it does need a little bit more love, but Armbian does work great. Also now there is an ARM64 Debian made by Raksha, and uh, this Debian is Buster. So uh, that is great, that's the newest Buster. We know there is recall box for this board to play games, emulation. I've shown that in the earlier videos. And we also know there is Libre Elec for this board, so to watch videos and so. So I'm going to show you the software that is available for the board. I'm going to show you mainline Armbian. I'm also going to show you Panfrost. So here we go! For the people who didn't see my first review video, I will quickly go over the specs again. So this has got the Rockchip RK3399 SOC with 2 times A72 cores at 1.8 GHz, can be overclocked to 2 GHz, and 4 times A53 cores at 1.4 GHz, which can be clocked to 1.5 GHz. You can buy the RockPi with 1, 2 or 4 GB of RAM, DDR4. So this has got two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. The good thing is both USB 3 ports have their own controller, so both can have up to 440 megabytes per second. It of course has got a micro SD card reader. It has got an M.2 NVMe slot. This can give you read write speeds of more than one gigabytes per second. This is something the Oldroid N2 or the Cadas Vim 3 doesn't have. And it also has got an eMMC socket and the eMMC modules are compatible with the Oldroid modules. It also has got MIPI CSI and MIPI DSI which is compatible with the Raspberry Pi. It has got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board but only the B models, also power over Ethernet only the B model and of course it has got HDMI on board. It also has got a 3.5mm audio jack. This is how I'm using my RockPi. So I've got the big heatsink now. I've put some legs in the fins of the heatsink. I've put a fan underneath it that's connected to 3 volts. So it doesn't make too much noise. I let my NVMe drive stick out. This isn't the best way. I do have got the hat for it. But I'm not using it. I'm lazy. Using the big heatsink is a lot better than that small heatsink. But there is one negative with it. You cannot reach the eMMC with it, so you have to remove the heatsink to be able to reach the eMMC. So to download the images we go to rockpy.org or we just type in rockpy in Google and the first one is rockpy.org. Then we go to wiki. And here we go to downloads. So here you got Android TV and Android 7 and 9. There's also Ubuntu server. There's also Debian desktop. It is Stretch, not Buster. I thought it was Buster, but it's Stretch. But it is ARM64. It used to be ARM HF, so that is great. The ARM bin over here. Don't download this Armbian. This was a preview version. Don't download this here. Download it at the Armbian website. So there is Manjaro, there is Recallbox, there is Libreelec, and also a new one, Slackware. I have tried it, but I wasn't very impressed. But it is new, so it does need some more work. There is also a very good stretch ARM64 community image. So to download Armbian, we go to the Armbian website, 
there we go to downloads and here is RockPy. So here you can download Armbian Buster desktop and also Armbian Bionic desktop. But if we go down here then we see that there are a lot more options. So here you can download the server images and the desktop images of Buster, Stretch and Bionic and hopefully in the future also the mainline kernels 5.3 or later. This is new and it's great to have these options. So here I am in Debian Stretch ARM64. I do not like the LXDE desktop, so I first install the MATI desktop. So for that I type sudo apt install MATI desktop and an asterisk to also install the extras. We will also need LXDM to be able to log in to the MATI desktop. Be sure to choose the right display manager, so LXDM. So when we reboot, we get this window and underneath we can choose the desktop we want. So here I'm choosing Mati. So in my last video I've shown you how to install the taskbar applets in XFCE. Now we are gonna do the same in Mati. So for that we type in sudo apt install Mati applets. Now that is done we can add two CPU frequency monitors, one command for the temperature and the system monitor. These work exactly the same as in XFCE, watch my video installing Armbian on an SBC to learn more about these. To show you the frequencies of the clusters I will do a 7-zip benchmark. I first have to install it, so sudo apt install p7-zip full. As you see it is clocked here at 1.8 GHz for the big cores and 1.4 GHz for the small cores. So now let's see to overclock this. So for this I need Genie. So to install Genie type in this. And we open it with sudo Genie. We go to the file system, then the boot directory, and there we open this file. And here we search setting CPU frequency to 2 GHz, there we remove the hashtag. We save it and reboot it. If we now do again 7ZB for the 7-zip benchmark, then we will see that the big cores are clocked at 2 GHz and the small cores are clocked at 1.5 GHz. It is best to have the big heatsink for this. I would not advise this with the small heatsink. You do gain a bit of CPU performance with this, but this comes at the cost of a higher power consumption and also higher temperatures. Here we are at the setup of Manjaro LXQT. I do like Manjaro a lot, it looks very good, it is a lot of fun to work with. The biggest advantage of Manjaro is that the repositories are very up to date. So for example you have Blender 2.80 here, while in Ubuntu and Debian it is still 2.79. So if you want the latest software, then use Manjaro. But a lot of things don't work well for me. For example I can't change my display resolution. That is important for me because I work with a capture device. Auto mount doesn't work, so when you plug in a USB drive it doesn't mount it automatically, so you have to manually mount. My Wi-Fi reception seems very bad, so I had to use a Wi-Fi dongle for it. And after a while it even didn't boot anymore. I will see if I can make a later video on this when I have more time to investigate more. Now to Armbian and the GPU driver. Now official Armbian works very well. I can't find anything that is wrong with it. For me this is the best operating system on the RockPy, but be sure to download the official Armbian for it. So here is how SuperTux card looks on the default Armbian with default kernel. 
As you see it's only about one frame per second and that is not playable. So now to my self-built Armbian Bionic image with mainline kernel 5.4 with the Panfrost module installed. At first it is great to be able to use mainline, that means we don't need to depend on the manufacturer for maintaining the kernel and that makes it a lot easier to build your own kernel with the modules you want. I have made an easy to follow tutorial to build this image yourself, but this image is not supported. I also do not recommend yet to use this image for a daily use, just use it as a test to see how Panfrost works now. Not much is working that I can say, only Super Tux card does work. I must say thank you to Salvador Liebana from PyLab for the help with Panfrost and writing the tutorial. So here is how Super Tux card now looks. As you see this is a lot better and as you see it uses the Panfrost drivers. Again this is very early, this only works with OpenGL 2.1 so we have to wait for OpenGL 3 to have great gaming on Linux but it is great to see that progress is made so in a few months this will be a great Linux gaming machine. One thing that's better with the mainline kernel I can use 5 GHz Wi-Fi with the mainline kernel while I only can use a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi with the vendor kernel. That means the Wi-Fi driver is better in the mainline kernel. So Raksha can improve that in their kernel. As you see a lot of progress is being made. We still have to wait a while before it is awesome but it is on the way to being there. I will make a lot more videos when great games work on Linux with Panfrost. It's also great that we now can overclock the Rock Pi, but you need the big heatsink of course. For watching video there's Libre Elec, for playing games there is Recall Box and Linux works great as a desktop, but when Panfrost arrives all that can work in Linux itself. So that's it for today, I hope you all liked my video, thank you all for watching, see you all later, bye!